Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to propose pharmacotherapy for coronaviruses in perspective of complementary and antenatal medicine using uh, medicinal plants. You see, you are quite familiar with the history of uh, Atropa belladonna, uh, which uh, contains atropine, which is a standard anticholinergic drug, and you are quite familiar with the digoxin, which is still in practice, and that is uh, through the uterus lineata and so many other medicinal plants which are of vital importance in the modern practice of medicine. So, uh, there are so many videos on the net that uh, what is the reality and realism behind Senamukki and especially sometimes they say uh, you put Adrak or Zinjabara Pishinel in this. So today we have focused that which particular uh, uh, medicinal plants are very uh, important and especially they have scientific evidences for the management of coronaviruses. So let me proceed in perspective of modern medicine. So what is the difference between a complementary and alternative medicine you see? In complementary medicine, it is used as an adjunct or in combination with the standard practice of medicine, whereas in alternative medicine, it wholly and solely replaces. It is uh, uh, about the already modern practice of medicine. So that is why you can find so many journals like BMC Complementary and Alternative Medicine, for which I am working as an associate editor, and you see. so. Uh, having the expertise in uh, medicinal plants and pharmacology, let me share with you some data that may help, especially uh, in combating uh, this uh, pandemic. Uh, so my lecture will be primarily focused in perspective of the medicinal plant to combat coronaviruses. Now, as a bit background about the respiratory viruses, how it is, is you can find influenza virus, you can find rhinoviruses, you can find severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronaviruses, and of course, hantaviruses, and viruses, and influenza viruses, <coughs> excuse me, and in the respiratory syndrome viruses. But uh, no matter, important is that how the infection spreads, you are quite familiar, and there is much more awareness about in the media. So I'll not sp spend time on that. But once the new study came that about chloroquine, that remdesivir and chloroquine significantly reduces, and even the President Trump was going to lead the situation, which to me honestly, uh, the Minister of Health should have come together and they should have done that. So what is important, important to understand is that uh, we predicted since very early that Chloroquine in this particular concentration, you see one micromolar, you can see uh, the, 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 the growth of this particular uh, uh, um, uh, viruses was not significantly inhibited and at 3.3 micromolar you can find this, uh, whereas in 10 micromolar this value was this. Once we translated the study and keeping in view the pharmacokinetics, and healthy volunteers, we predicted that giving in that normal doses the chloroquine, uh, the plasma level will be 0 0.7 at 0 0.1 micromolar, and this is not sufficient to combat to combat the virus viruses, and perhaps uh, we predicted in the very early the, uh, about the failure of uh, this particular chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine therapy, and you can find that videos on my YouTube channel two and three months back. So uh, here we are going to translate some studies uh, in perspective of coronaviruses that which can be helpful. And I hope, I'm, I'm confident that that will uh, definitely work so far translation in medicine and translation in pharmacology is concerned. So you are quite familiar with one of the phenomena that is cellulation phenomena where the mosaic acid are there present at the host cells and it helps in the aggregation and adhesion of uh, the especially um, the foreign particle, the viruses, the bacteria, and of course it helps in the tumor regression as well. So if we inhibit this, so it means we can inhibit the entry of these cells into the eukaryotes. So this is the basic phenomena. And here is the DNA viruses, this is human immunodeficiency viruses, and this is coronaviruses which is a uh, uh, RNA viruses. Uh, what important to understand is 
that we refresh your knowledge that once the virus goes inside in both the cases, you see, so there is a reverse transcription and this reverse transcription, the viral DNA is synthesized. And this is through the RDDP, uh, replica, um, this is polymerase enzyme, DNA dependent, uh, RNA dependent, uh, uh, DNA polymerase uh, enzyme especially. So RDDP are there and here the RDRP are there, RNA dependent, uh, RNA polymerase enzyme in case of uh, rhinoviruses, especially or viruses with the uh, uh, RNA strands. Here is the DNA. So no matter if whether that is uh, RNA strand viruses or DNA strand viruses, what happens? The, the, the logic is that that the single strand RNA, the single strand RNA is then uh, called and duplicated. And once that is duplicated, so 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 uh, cross-linking is there like double helix DNA. But here is the ribonucleic acid. And in case of the DNA viruses. There is a classical DNA through the reverse transcription is there. This is the difference between DNA viruses and RNA viruses. So important to understand it was predicted that chloroquine will work and uh, for stabilization and then in reverse. But but as we predicted that in that particular dose the chloroquine is not going to work there. So that failed and what we predicted that is now evident. Here we postulate that if we have a structural analog like that of uh, what you can say, nucleoside or nucleotide, uh, as remdesivir does, as RNA dependent RNA polymerase, in the case of uh, this particular viruses, or uh, um, coronaviruses, or in case of DNA dependent uh, RNA dependent DNA polymerase, you say in the reverse transcription. So, so nucleoside and nucleotide reverse transcription inhibitors. So that may work here. And Keeping uh, in keeping in view this point, you see, uh, we will we will exploit this idea. But let me tell you that under the protolysis, you see, then there is translation, replication, and then the assembly or packaging, and then exit of this uh, freely synthesized, newly synthesized viron or virus that going to invade the new cells. And same, this is what same happen in case of DNA viruses. So keep this point and this will help you. Now Glycerase glabra is uh, called in Urdu military or in Hindi and this is uh, in Pashto which is called as Hoglar Gay or Hogawale. And important is that uh, uh, this is a paper being published and they, in Purdue, they, they predicted that it is going to inhibit, it contains Glycerase, it contains Glycerazine and it's going to inhibit the cellulation of hepatitis B viruses. Uh, especially surface antigen with that the surface uh, with the glycoprotein present at the at that particular uh, cell and consequently is going to uh, inhibit the viral membrane uh, HIV cells and so many other types of viruses. So inhibition of phosphoretic of the enzyme of vesicular stenotitis in virus infection is also there and there are so many predictions you can find that in literature but since we have focused cell annihilation so in case of cell annihilation, you see, you can find this in one of sit here, and this is uh, some 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 prediction that which particular viruses uh, do have uh, the, the 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 that bind to the cell -like acid, especially involving which cellulotein, you see, and the enzyme involved here is being predicted here. So in case of coronaviruses, this virus enzyme is there, and you can find it spikes for surface protein with the uh, uh, NEU5 and so many other sequence of that particular uh, particular uh, uh, cyanuric acid that present. Uh, so it can be helpful. So um, if you are going to inhibit the esterase enzyme or cellulation phenomena, so not only we are going to inhibit the coronaviruses, but we are going to inhibit the topo, to, toroviruses and of course enteroviruses and Haemophilus influenzae virus, you see HA or NS strand particular, but here the enzyme is phalarase, you see. So this is very important uh, and changes in this surface epitopes or this particular glycoprotein uh, being replaced with the other sequence can lead to can lead to, can lead to, can lead to 
uh, resistance as well. But it's a different topic and different phenomena. So let me proceed. Uh, and this is classical uh, picture of glacier the glabra. You see, uh, and this glacier the glabra, you see, uh, uh, it's going to have empty viral compounds once compared with the standard drug riboborine and then the glacierizine. You see, the results were very promising against the standard coronaviruses, and 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 this we predicted that 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 that's going to inhibit the synthesis of coronaviruses. And this was a paper published in Lancet with the glycerazine, uh, meaning if two components of liquorice or glycerazine grabber helps in the replication of coronaviruses. This was published in the year 2003. And this is negative control, and this is different concentration. There is complete clarity, you see, in glycerazine. Uh, after the absorption, you see, and then during and uh, after the virus absorption, and this is the mm, EC50 value, and this is the CC50 value. So it's very important to understand. Oh, and what were the results? Our findings suggest, that's what the author says, that glycerazine should be assessed for the treatment of severe acute respiratory syndrome. Uh, let me proceed further. And, uh, but what should be the adverse effects? And then the question is that which particular dose it, it shall be recommended? So the book says that, WHO says that 100 milligram of glycerazic acid, or more than 100 milligram per day can be dangerous. And the question is that how general glycerizer contains this uh, particular, uh, if you find this in the market, what is the uh, uh, active content? And the active monitors book say that two to eight percent, you see, glycerazine are present. And this is very interesting. What is 2 to 8 percent? 2 to 8 percent means if I take it from the lower limit, 2 percent mean uh, 2 gram per 100 gram of, per 100 gram of, of, of powder, powder uh, glycerizer, glycerizer or dry. So what is important that if you take 2 gram, 2 gram, uh, and, and if you simplify this, you can find this that 2 milligram per 100 milligram. So the 100 milligram of the powdered or uh, what you can say, the glacierizer, glacierizer uh, uh, um, um, wood or root will have 2 milligram of 2 milligram of of the epto constituent. And you say the books and the book says that not more than 100 milligram. Uh, should be given. So it means it's a very, very safe. There's no risk of. However, it produces high risk decrease in the potassium level and subsequently increase in blood pressure. So if there are some patients going to use that for a long period of time, more than four months, then they should go for their uh, serum electrolyte level. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the limit is not that as 100 milligram as 2 milligram is going to give you sufficient effect. Now, there is another plant that is called Senalius, and it is mild cathartic. But if you go to the drug bank available at the Ministry of Health side, you see you can find the structure of Senocide A, which is available there, and the classical uh, antiviral activity against human immunodeficiency virus has been reported, despite the fact it is being uh, a weaker laxative. This is a technical point to remember. On YouTube, different doctor comes, and they say that it is cathartic, and please do not give, and it is going to dehydrate, this, this, this. So I'm just telling them if it is going to be a weaker lecture too, we have a remedy for that. So please be with us in this video till the end that we will advise you the the, 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 the remedy to, uh, to combat this adverse effect. Uh, here is another paper and which says that the coronaviruses endoribonucleases are potential target as these endonucleases are present in the Coronaviruses are also present in the viruses, toroviridine, and it is not present in the mosquito related, but it does exist in the in the other mammals as well. And if this is the story, you can target the virus from the other side as well, keeping in view the non-structural protein 15 and at this particular position. Do you see this is the structural protein, non-structural protein, and this is the structural protein including the spike? So endonuclease exists here. And if you are going to target the RDRP, uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, then you have to go for this particular side. 
and in gene bank and in loss and you can different you can attribute the pharmacological response to different 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 uh, sequence genetic sequence but that will be a separate totally different story but to tell you the centers are working since 1997 uh, till till the year 2020 and I'm, I'm sure that they will get the get through but now instant remedies are important there is another medicinal plant that is called rhubarb and they are called in Urdu or Hindi it is called as Raven Chini and again it contains sinusoid A and sinusoid B you see and sinusoid A and sinusoid B are the glycoside and uh, the results of this study is uh, which was published in the part of medicine that uh, it is very interesting results showed that the sinusoid A profile inhibition was similar to that observed for nucleoside analog uh, this is important, nucleoside analog, because remdesivir is being uh, uh, mm, uh, introduced into the market. It is also uh, a nucleoside or uh, nucleotide analog. So this is a grace in disguise for us that it contains that rheum rhubarb or the sena contains sinusoid A, and this sinusoid A will be a grace in disguise. This is uh, the previous lecture, the previous slide that I have. Uh, mm, uh, re reproduce and to tell you that how the chloroquine therapy was paired and how the uh, we are going to remdesivir is going to work here and probably it is the target side for the sinusoid, sinusoid A and sinusoid B as well and no matter whether this is the RNA viruses or the DNA viruses remember but the target of action since nucleoside or nucleotides are the same and then it's going to it, it, that intercalate in this particular uh, transcription stage and so subsequently likely uh, the viral protein and the viral RNA will not be or DNA will not be synthesized depending upon the RDDP or RDRP enzyme as whatever the nature of the virus will be so uh, this is uh, 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 the uh, report results of sinusoid A and sinusoid B that it works at the integrase level and how it's going to affect the uh, viral DNA uh, replication. Now the question is how to use these medicinal plants as it contains sinusoid A and rhubarb also contains sinusoid A. Since they are mild laxative, they are mild laxative, remember there is one is laxative and that is cathartic. So if they are mild laxative then we can combine zinjabar abishinil and what is zinjabar abishinil in urdu it is called as adrak this is very important likely in a in a in a anti-acid syrup anti-acid in that anti-acid suspension available in the market what we do that we give ignition heart oxide which produce uh, diarrhea and we then that combine with the uh, aluminum heart oxide which produce constipation so here here uh, what uh, uh, Zinjabar abishinil will do, it will produce, it will produce, it will give you a dysphasmodic effect. Zinjabar abishinil will give you a dysphasmodic effect and especially it is used in irritable bone syndrome as well. It contains gingerol, zinjabirol and so many other. So the point is how is we are going to use it? We should use it, we should chop it, a piece of ginger, in a small, make a small paste. In ordinary water because water is having a high dielectric constant and it is universal solvent and then we put the paste that in cinnamon tea so how we are, you just take uh, a glass of water you see uh, as 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 prepare the uh, tea of uh, what you can say cinna or if you don't have cinna just take rhubarb or rhubarb is available on the net then add then add uh, paste of paste of uh, adak, what you can say as a ginger, and then you can take it. But remember, uh, we use uh, glycerizer glaba. You can take in addition to that glycerizer glaba. So, zinjabar abishinel will 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 antagonize the laxative effect. There will be no laxative effect, or is on the principle like it was on the principle of this particular uh, antacid syrup. Uh, the question is how much uh, uh, this uh, should be used so just take a one piece of that or an one inch size it should be chopped and chopping this particular 
should be should be added once the tea is prepared don't add before because the volatile oil will be lost and it will not give you the pharmacological response so this is very important uh, to to combat all these things now now this logic should be exploited based on the based on the based on the on the on the on the particular modern sciences remember since uh, um, glycerize is going to produce uh, what you can say a prolate imbalance hypokalemia you can take banana and you can take mango as a resource of potassium uh, i hope this has worked and if you have any question please do contact and stay blessed have a nice day